previously on Bottom Feeders. <laughs> you know, we get along great together. We can laugh and joke and have a good time. It's as pointless as Jack brushing his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> know you're going to come out and everyone's going to be happy at the end of the day. <laughs> right now, you know, they're just getting into that winter mode. It's always rough. It's always a battle. You're always hunting them. He's better than nothing. We should have had more fish than this. They should really be pushing into these winter spots. There's always that wish that you're going to hit the right amount of fish at the right time to make a, a good chunk of money. You could really have all bad luck, and it could last forever. You, you just never know. I think that's what keeps you going. Carp, sheephead, buffalo, and suckers. For most Americans, these bottom feeders have no place in our lakes or on our plates. But there are fishermen who have found opportunity. For commercial fishermen, risk is part of the job description. But in Pepin, Wisconsin, Mike and Rick Johnson are moving forward cautiously. Got enough ice out there? Looks all right, don't it? I'll have to let's check it out. A week of cold weather has created the first ice of the season. The Johnson brothers need to catch fish today. They always need fish. It ain't no different because it's freaking 10 degrees that I don't make a living if I don't catch fish. Where's your push up? You gotta be optimistic to stay in it. First ice is when the fishing is really about the best because the fish have time to just settle down and school up without any interruption from man. Oh. It's a rough gig sometimes just getting onto the ice. No risk, there's no uh, potential to make money. Oh, you'll have to poke along here a little bit. Yeah. Have to make sure it's gonna be all right to cross down here. Before fishing could begin, Rick must determine if the ice could hold up to a thousand pounds of gear. I'm always stuck checking everything. It's kind of my job, I guess. Well, I bought an inch here, mate. Careful now. Hopefully, you get to where you got five, six inches. That's what we really need is about six inches. Looks all right here. You all right? Not really. Smash my hand. Mmm, top of that spud light right on my finger. I don't know why Mike don't like to go out there and check on things ahead of time, but he can do it next time. It ain't very good right there, Mike. Meanwhile, in Minnesota, Tim Adams and his partner, Jeff Riederman, have assembled a team to help load out a haul of fish in their net. I'm hoping the fish didn't get out of a hole in the bag. There's a pile of them in this haul. In excess of 200,000 pounds again, that would set us up pretty good. The biggest challenge of the day is to, to simply get them fish tight enough so that we can start getting them out fast enough to load a truck within a reasonable amount of time. The loadout can begin only after all of Tim and Jeff's equipment is in place. I don't know if that little rope's gonna do it, Tim. Get that long chain off the tractor trailer. Where's he going now? Where would he think the chains would be? Nowadays, kids, I wonder if they really get into a tough situation if they're gonna be able to handle it. I got kids, they walk to the toilet, they sit down and they poop their pants. <laughs> the guys seem to always get picked on pretty good by Jeff. He uses them guys as all his jokes, and it's all in good fun. I tell Chris right where to go to find that stuff, and then he's standing there with the unbroken piece of drool. I don't know where they're at, Jeff. <laughs> Just like in basic training in the military, they kind of tear you down, and then they build you back up. I got to be a little tough on them. Tim will use the loader mounted on the boat to scoop fish out of the net. I can never, ever relax. You're always a bundle of nerves as to what's going to happen or what could happen. Yeah, I wish we could get the trucks and trailers out there and make today go pretty easy. Little nip and tuck on the ice yet, so.
Further south, Jeff Ritter is squeezing in a holiday season fishing trip. We're gonna go try uh, drifting a trammel net for uh, a sturgeon or some catfish. Got a few fish ahead, so it's decent weather. We're gonna go try to make a little extra. Haven't done it this, this late in the year like this a whole lot, so I don't know what we're in for. In search of open water, today Jeff and Ron are fishing on a tributary of the Mississippi. All the ice is going to the wrong side. This doesn't look good. I didn't expect there to be this much ice floating, so I, I don't know if we're going to be able to do anything. Oh, channel can't be jammed, can it? This might be a short trip. It's hard on the boat, it's hard on the motor, nearly impossible to lay a net through all of it. I've never even seen ice in here like this. This sucks. It looks like where we intend to go is pretty well shot. I'm hoping it's an illusion. I don't think the channel's plugged. No, I just all pushed on this it side. It looks like this, we're not fishing. We're done. How many species of fish can be found in the Mississippi River? The answer is C. The Mississippi is home to at least 260 species of fish, representing about 25% of all species in North America. Back in Wisconsin, Mike and Rick Johnson's fishing trip is in jeopardy. If they can't find thick ice, the day is over before it begins. Four inches. It looks like it's gonna be all right there where he's going now. It's important that we get out now and, and, and keep nets working and keep fish caught for uh, our markets. Keep your skinny ass flat down there. I'll have to give her hell. Mike and Rick are headed for the center of Lake Pepin. Today, the Johnsons are using running boards. Now, this is old fashioned way. That's how they did it. They got submarines and stuff now. And the board's relatively cheap. A, a sub this big costs more than a four wheeler does. I can buy a lot of boards for $6,000. A pretty exact science. We got to walk the net right out here on the ice. We've, we've got a fish, you know, I mean, it's not a week off deal. It's just gotta be done. Basically 10, 10 foot boards, so we pound it together and make a 100 foot board out of it. Now we'll float it up against the ice, but we'll just keep catching the board every 100 feet until we can get our two or 300 feet of net out that we wanna get out at a crack. This technique dates back to the origins of ice fishing. It's kind of a long, tedious process to get nets out, but it works and sometimes uh, the right spots here, they'll catch right on through the winter sometimes. And there's the end. So then I just go to the other end and find it again and do it again. I can't sit at home and not do nothing. I'm always trying to catch fish. I'm always thinking of fish and I'm gonna do as much of it as I can in my lifetime. Ready, Mike? Yeah, born ready. Mike and Rick are dropping 300 feet of net below the ice. This is how it's been done for generations, that's for sure. That old board, lots and lots of guys have put lots of nets in and seines in with that board, just like that. Well, we'll see, we'll come back in the morning and we'll bring some more nets. We'll get some more nets out if they look pretty good. Minnesota, Tim and Jeff are closing in on the job. Now, they must tighten up the net to make the process of loading out much easier. We really gotta be careful not to, cause we could rip that lacing off. I need to consistently catch fish all the time and it's always, you're always a bundle of nerves. Just gotta take this very slowly. Did it rip loose or something or what? It doesn't take much to rip that net. I can pull a little bit on there. Well, we got so many fish in here. What they did is they sand these edges out. We're just trying to pull them in. They, they mud in the web where you can't hardly pull on them. 
continually going into halls where there's lots of rocks, lots of logs, things like that. We already got dead fish coming in. I think we're just gonna have to dip a while. We can have no trouble getting a few dips. With the net back in place, all that's left to do is load out a few hundred thousand pounds of fish. Having a battle of wits with, with Tim, you know, that isn't fair, having a battle of the wits with an unarmed man. It's just <laughs> constantly all day long, and some of the stuff he comes up with, it's like, what in the world are you thinking? You know, on that screen looks like Tim's underwear. You know, he got a good haul. Barely any white left on it. <laughs> His t-shirt even has a bacon strip on it. I think he stays up all night long thinking of stuff to say and to come up with. I wear my tennis shoes on the long ride down here. Otherwise, my feet start smelling like Tim's breath by the time I get here. Good work, man. And you too, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we deal with a lot of different people all the time, and everybody always says how funny Jeff is. And I, you know, I, I think it's time. I, I think he needs to step it up. You always think you're so damn funny making fun of my underwear. Why don't you go down to that open mic night, that comedy club? Yeah, I don't know about that. I probably tell a lot of jokes, but stand-up comedy, uh, I don't think I'm a stand-up comedian by any stretch of the imagination. You won't do it for a hundred bucks. I might. I might try it. Meanwhile, back in Wisconsin, Jeff Ritter is battling unexpected ice. It looks like the entire main channel is plugged from here clean down to the dam. I'm a little frustrated because we drove all the way down here. I was, had my heart set on maybe make a little extra cash or just something different, and I don't think we're going to get a play. Is it worth to even try? I can officially tell you this ain't never happened here before, ever. I guess I choose not to give up because I'm kind of stubborn. There's one area we can try. We'll have to try. Finally in open water, Jeff and Ron drop their travel net. Basically, we're gonna let the, the net just free float. I have no idea what kind of snags or wood or anything that may have floated in there. Well, we'll see what we got. I don't see any fish on the locator. That's the one thing I don't like. No fish. There's one. Hey. Nice cat. Maybe he was pulling down. Yeah. The net's coming up and it's not snagged and we got a catfish, maybe maybe there's gonna be some here. They don't look bad. There's a few here. Minnesota, the front loader makes quick work of the job. Oh, get that car. It's all a profit for the day, just about lost. A wasteful bastard. After expenses, Tim and Jeff will clear about $4,000 on this haul. This one here, buck and a half, that's what it's worth. It's usually not even worth half that. That was a good day. We got a lot of carp. Any haul anymore that's even a full semi full is a good haul. With fishing complete, the focus turns to comedy. I bet Jeff a hundred bucks he wouldn't do a stand up comedy night and I found a place for him to do it and now it's just a matter to see if he'll actually do it or not. Hundred bucks. How about hundred bucks? I've always been a sucker for a dare. You won't do it. I'll do it, but I can't lose. I mean, even if I flop, you know, what are they gonna do? Take away my, my birthday? If I do the improv, you gotta do a strip tease at the old folks' home for the old ladies. <laughs> Took the bet, so I think you'll be nervous as all heck up until the time comes. I mean, they're not fussy when they get that old. Even your goods may be <laughs> sufficient. <laughs> few fish in the boat. Jeff and Ron are pulling in the last of their trammel net. They're all the right size. A lot of times in this late in the year when you catch a fish or two, they're, they're in groups. So I'm hoping as we go along here, we'll find the main group. We might see a good bunch of fish. A nice cat. 
but we got a really nice set on them. You don't get any better than that. In this section of the river, the current is moving quickly. That's the snag. All right, try it. Hold this. There's what we were hooked on. Is that some old webbing? Yep. And another snag. You're drifting 200 feet in net across the bottom of the Mississippi River. Um, I'm not surprised, but it sucks when it happens. It shredded it, didn't it? I'm not putting it back in there. Maybe it's time to just take a couple days off and enjoy the holidays. We done it up. Pretty much $300 down the drain. That's, we might as well just strip those out and go. But is there 50 pounds there? Yeah, they're probably close to 50. I always think I could get one step ahead. Sometimes that doesn't work. Definitely we did not set the world on fire by any means, but we got a handful of nice big catfish. There's a lot of days we come down here and don't catch that many, so it sucks we ruined a net, but I guess you take the good with the bad. We'll call it a day. on Lake Pepin. The Johnson brothers are checking their nets left to soak overnight. I suppose I'll go spot that other old hole. Yeah, grab the rope tire up. It's got to be that little spark in the beginning every day, hoping I set nets in the right spot and I'm going to catch fish. I mean, there was a few fish hitting yesterday, so I'm really hoping we got some fish going here. Feel any bites down there? Feel. I think sometimes you do a lot of work for nothing. You want to give up, but you can't. Come on, fishy. A carp. And I got one. To most people, what I do probably doesn't look very easy, and it probably isn't very easy. I've done a lot of other stuff, and there's nothing easier than fishing. <laughs> Not too hard. You hear about uh, Riederman's going to do a stand-up bit for Timmy? No. You do it at the bar? We'll have to go check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out for sure. I thought it was just Bunny right there all by itself. I expect him to fail. <laughs> Get off the stage! Get off the stage! Boo! Oh, you're gonna pull that back in? Yeah. All right. Yeah. It happens. You just you do a lot of work and you get nothing and one freaking fish in here. I mean, it's just the way it is. You make enough noise. Maybe we've scattered the fish off just enough, even though uh, they didn't do great. We're gonna give them another uh, day or two. Mike and Rick are dropping the net back under the ice for another night. Didn't get much for fish, but we only gave it a day. Hard to tell what'll happen if you let it set a few days here now. is a principle of comedy. So for a fisherman accustomed to taking huge chances each day on the water, it's interesting the biggest risk of all is standing in front of a crowd with a microphone. I'm not a stand-up comedian. I mean, I got to hand it to them guys. That's got to be tough because always some a-hole, you know, heckling you or whatever. <laughs> we'll see how funny he really is, I guess, here in a little bit. Most of your good comedians are insane on some level, I believe. So, I, I think I can fit that bill, but I don't know if I'd ever want to do it for a living. I'll stick to the carp. He's a pretty good Joe and a pretty good fisherman, and we'll see if he's uh, worth a damn as a comedian. Yeah. It's for the show. Oh, no, Ritter's here. I had no idea there was going to be that many people there. There wasn't any room left in that bar. <laughs> Let me not suck tonight. Kind of feeling for Jeff, because I know he's super nervous about getting up there. Knock him out, Jeff. I also know he's going to do a good job. This is going to be good. It's going to be really good. You know, we didn't have anything like, uh, you know, in Nintendos or basically anything. I don't even know if we had our own toothbrushes, but, uh, uh, but. 
people have come to watch this thing, and now I'm starting to wonder what the hell did I get myself into. Sure, come on, come on. There's some one-liners. He's funny if he's good. Just fit them one-liners. I kind of anticipated him to, to be a little slow at first, but I, I know he's going to let loose towards the end. Figured I'll stop in the Dwayne's place there and use his facilities. And uh, I say, Dwayne, where the hell is your toilet paper? And he goes, I never owned a roll of toilet paper and I never will. Just grab a shirt or something. So I, all right. What the hell do you throw your, your laundry away or what? Nope. Send it home. Mom cleans it up, comes back nice and clean. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Once the dam broke, it started flowing a little bit better. And the rats are in there just tearing your fish house apart. You better get in there. <laughs> That's a surprise. <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of fun, a lot of fun with poop, and poop can be practical too, because <laughs> I have no idea where he comes up with that. And him and the damn toilet smashed right through the floor. <laughs> this is way too good not to not to have him up there doing that kind of stuff. I mean it's good stuff. I am too, but you don't see me bothering you. So. <laughs> can you take one more? Oh, it was scary in the beginning and it was a lot of fun at the end. Maybe one day I'll get another shot at doing it again. I think I could do a heck of a lot better. Like, like I said, I'll stick to net in the car, but <laughs> thanks for putting up with me.